Hi, everyone. Uh, great to be here. Uh, thanks to the organizers for letting me talk about Genomic Medicine Sweden. I'm an external relations officer there. So Genomic Medicine Sweden, it's a unique collaboration between healthcare and academia. It was uh, discussions were started already in 2012 between representatives from healthcare and from academia. And in 2017, GMS was formed uh, with funding uh, one year later from the Swedish Innovation Agency, Vinova. Uh, and then it has increased its activities and got uh, extended and increased funding from Vinova and also from our 14 different partners that are the seven healthcare regions and the seven universities with medical faculty. Uh, and also this year we have got continued funding uh, uh, from, from Winova and I will come back to this. Um, so in the government, Swedish government's life science strategy that came in December 2019, it says that Sweden should be a pioneer in the implementation of precision medicine in healthcare. Uh, and Genomic Medicine Sweden now is a national collaborative initiative, but it is a project. It doesn't lie uh, within the social, the Ministry of uh, Social Affairs. So, but it was a positive signal. And in the recent research and uh, in innovation bill, we got extended funding uh, that is funded from Vinova to, to GMS for the GMS for the next coming three years. So this is really positive news. Um, so we're clinically oriented. As I said, we are a bottom-up initiative from healthcare and academia. Uh, we're truly national. So we have established seven genomic medicine centers uh, from north in Sweden to the south. And we are working to harmonize national standards, guidelines and methods so that you can have a resource efficient coordinated implementation of precision medicine in Sweden in healthcare. And also we work uh, in collaboration uh, with research and, and industry for research and innovation. And all with the main goal of that all patients, regardless of healthcare region in Sweden, should receive the best diagnostics and individualized care treatment and follow up. We have also established a national IT infrastructure to share data, the National Genomics Platform, NGP. Uh, and already now the, the seven genomic medicine centers, they are linked to this NGP and are able to share for now microbiology data, since we are struggling with the legal framework, how to be able to share uh, human clinical patient data. Um, but this will be a national resource for healthcare research and innovation is, is the aim, and also to link uh, genomic data to quality registers. Uh, GMS, we are working in seven different diagnosis and treatment areas. So we're working with rare diseases, cancer we have divided into hematology, solid tumors and pediatric cancer. We're working on infectious diseases, microbiology, pharmacogenomics and complex diseases. And then, as of course, there are many common issues that goes uh, all over the different disease diagnostics and disease there. So we're working on dedicated on informatics and data sharing, uh, on ethical and legal issues, uh, communication and education, health economy, and also innovation and industry collaboration. So this is already in clinical routine. In Sweden last year, we did more than 3000 clinical whole genome sequencing. Uh, more than 1,400 clinical whole exome sequencing and more than 11,000 clinical gene panels. Uh, it's a little bit small, but the graph shows um, how the, the whole genome sequencing and whole exome sequencing has increased over the last years. And mainly this is in rare diseases, but also solid tumors now uh, increasing. Um, we have implemented a gene panel for uh, myeloid malignancy in clinical use at five different sites. So this is 199 genes gene panel that is being used now. Uh, for rare diseases, we're doing whole genome sequencing uh, at three different sites now for the clinic. Uh, and the solid tumor working group is now also doing the final validation of this 
broad gene panel with 560 genes that will be implemented in the autumn for solid tumors. And we also have a couple of ongoing national studies, one that is in childhood cancer whole genome sequencing that is supported from the Swedish Childhood Foundation and the Ministry of Social Affairs, a dedicated support there to be able to do whole genome sequencing for all children with cancer. And then there's also a hematology whole genome sequencing uh, national study for acute leukemias. And in the 10 year plan that uh, we released uh, half a year ago or so, uh, we also have done some prognosis on the scaling up where you can see that in 2030, we have a prognosis for solid tumors where there would be 75,000 samples in gene panels and for complex diseases, 15,000 whole genome sequencing being performed. So uh, there are some key issues that we have identified. These are a couple of them. Uh, you can read more and download our strategic plan from our website. But one of the main ones is the national coordination and management uh, where we're really seeking to get a sustainable and long-term funding and steering where the the state is also involved. And now we're having discussions in Sweden between the uh, healthcare regions and the state for some sort of partnership and other ways to collaborate. Then, as I mentioned, the national genomics platform for secure use of genomic data, increased access to national clinical studies so that where we're working, collaborating now with a cancer clinical study, but are looking to collaborate uh, more broadly with other national clinical studies. Strong patient influence is important and where we have a really good and successful collaboration with the patient organizations uh, in cancer and rare diseases. One other important issue is the training and skills development for healthcare professionals where we have initiated some activities, but we would like to put more effort here and partnership with industry, of course. Uh, but one even more pressing issue for us right now is uh, how and with whom we can share data. And this goes for within healthcare, with researchers, with industry and, and internationally. Um, right now, we can share genomics and health data for the purpose of research where we have ethical approval, uh, but we cannot share genomics and health data for the purpose of care and treatment between the regions. Uh, and of course, this is key for uh, precision medicine that requires data sharing for many patients. So we have, uh, employed uh, a couple of counselors now that is has been really successful in the work to have them tightly connected to genomic medicine Sweden and we are now uh, having discussions and it will be key to have an overview and change of the legal framework and this is also one thing where we see that it will be really important in the collaboration with one million genomes initiative this synchronized, harmonized view on privacy and processing of sensitive personal genomic data in the light of GDPR, and also joint principles for secondary use of health data. And, and the other thing is also create the urgency around genomic medicine, precision medicine, precision health, involving politicians and policymakers. So we make them aware that this is happening right now, uh, which has come further in some countries and less further in, in some, I think. That was my last slide. Thank you.